Lord. And I wanted to share with you also a, a poem here or a, a, a lighthearted thought today. Amen. Some things you ever heard this before about what your mother has taught you, what your mother has taught you. You ever heard it before? And it's a, it's a kind of a lighthearted deal. So I'm going to give you this before we get into the heavy stuff here. All right. My mother taught me some things my mother has taught me. Amen. And you look back over your life and realize how to, again, some of the things in which they taught you didn't make sense all the time. But again, now as you get older, it does make sense, right? Amen. Uh, let's look at this. My mother taught me religion. Let me know that today. Your mother taught you religion. She says, you better pray that that comes out of the carpet. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> See, man, I said that to you before. She said, you better pray that that comes out of that carpet, boy or oh, girl. Amen. My mother taught me time travel. Let me know what time travel is. My, yeah, she said, uh, he said, if you don't straighten up, I'll knock you into next week. Amen. If you don't straighten up, I'll knock you into next week. My mother taught me logic. And she says, what? Because I said so. That's why. Amen. That's some good logic, isn't it? Again, she taught me foresight. Also the foresight to project, again, what, what, what you foresee or whatever the case may be or preparing for what's ahead. She says, you always got to make sure you have on clean underwear in case you get into an accident. Let me know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. She taught me osmosis. Y'all know osmo Y'all been to the circus before? And these folks, no doubt, they do all these contortions and all these different things. That's another one. But again, osmosis, she says, shut your mouth and eat your supper. <laughs> and how in the world could that be? I'm going to shut my mouth and eat my supper. In other words, she was trying to tell you to be quiet, right? <laughs> Close your mouth and eat, boy. Amen. Uh, again, or contortionists, what I'm talking about, contortionists, where they bend and all these different things. She said, uh, why don't you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? Look at that dirt on the back of your neck, contortionists. So I'm trying to look. I can't. Amen. Amen. See, my mother told me hypocrisy. <laughs> she said, if I told you once, I've told you a million times. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> right? Amen. And then uh, she also taught me, again, let me see one more. I'll give you one more before we go. I'm not a joke teller, folks. Amen. <laughs> well, again, she taught me, again, a job well done. If you're, going, if you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We're going to get rolling, folks. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus this morning. The book of Exodus. Thank God for his word this morning. Amen. Thank God for his word. Amen. The word of God. The Bible tells us it's quick and powerful. Sharpening any two-edged sword this morning. And I want to come out of the word of God here in Exodus chapter 2. So that there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife to daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not no longer no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid in, in the fig, flags by the river bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit, and what uh, would be done to him? In other words, to watch what would be done. Verse 5, the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she, went, uh, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw, and saw, saw the child and behold, wept. And she had compassion on him. And said, this is one of the Hebrew children. And then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and come to thee a nurse of the Hebrew? Or shall I call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? That she may nurse the child with thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. In verse 10, the Bible says, last verse, he says, And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. She called his name Moses. And she said, Because I have drew him out of the water. Amen. Let's look at this real quickly. 
And then in verses 3 again, I want to reread that. The Bible says, and when she could not no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. In other words, the weeds and the bushes there. Amen. For Libet, they want to use this about do whatever it takes to see deliverance. Amen. Doing whatever it takes to see deliverance. We ask, Reverend, if you open us in prayer. Amen. We think about our Mother's Day again. Happy Mother's Day to you ladies out there. And we, uh, the thoughts of motherhood in itself or parenting, the thoughts of it, and the Reverend kind of touched on a little bit here today, think of the responsibility that they have. The, re the responsibility that they have, again, as a mother, thinking about the strength of a woman also, the strength of a woman. My hat goes off to you ladies all the time. Amen. The strength of a woman and the ability to bear children. The ability to bear children, I don't want to bring back bad memories for you folks, but y'all know what the pain that you went through to bear these children. Labor alone is intense, no doubt. It's intense just to deliver that baby. And, and it's amazing to see the dynamics of reproduction. It's amazing, amen, the creation in which we have. Amen. Life is amazing, isn't it? Amen. You think about life and you think about how the two seeds come together, how the man fertilizes the egg and how they become one and how they produce what we call life. Amen. Life, and again, each one of us, because of this reproduction, we all both have a father and mother. And, and because of this, we both take on the characteristics of our father and mother. How many know what I'm about? Amen. Whether we like it or not, each one of us has characteristics of our parents. Genes, no doubt, the genes that you have. I was even thinking about you, brother, back there. Hey, man, I was looking at that, my godson. Hey, man, we're about to dedicate our godson here in a minute. And I mean, the genes are strong, hey, amen, on your side, hey, amen, the Carter side. And you can definitely tell, hey, amen, that they, again, uh, again, have strong genes. But genes, have you thought about that? Just give you a side note real quick. Think about the book of Genesis. And that word gene is, is found in Genesis also. Think about them. It's the beginning of man, the creation of mankind. So think about the genes, Genesis. Amen. The beginning. The beginning. So we all made up of different things, made up of different characteristics. As we oftentimes mention about body, soul, and spirit. Get a day. And so, uh, side note real quick. Also, think about, uh, again, who are we made of? The scripture tells us in another place, he says, we look just like our father. Amen. Jesus told us that we could be kid physically, but he was referring to how the, 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 the people of the Jews, look, uh, the children of Abraham, again, they represented either the father of Abraham or they represented, again, uh, the, the, the devil himself. We want to represent the good side. Amen. We want to represent Jesus Christ. We want to look just like him. Amen, if you please. We want, in other words, the characteristics of that which is good. The characteristics of that which is good. Again, you think about this, uh, uh, back to those things, those traits. Oftentimes, you parents out there, when the kid's acting bad, you refer to the mother. That's the mother's side, right? How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. amen. You men, amen. Uh, you just, that's, your, that's that side of the family. That's not my side of the family, right? <laughs> or the good side, you want to take credit for. It. Yeah, that's my side of the family right there. And they got that from me. You go through that, huh, sister? Amen. You go through that a lot, amen. And so you begin to see how the, the good side. And so, uh, again, think about this. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus 20, real quick, before we get to the main text of the message, we think about this. The Bible tells us to honor also. That's why we do that on Mother's Day. And we have Father's Day in, in, in June about honoring our mothers and fathers. Everybody follow to honor them and really you think about that again uh, uh, whether they are alive or whether they have gone on and passed away we must honor them amen high esteem definition is to hold them in high esteem to lift them up again today to give great respect to our parents amen young people today remember to respect your mom and dad amen Regardless how old you may get, it don't matter how old you are. Remember to always pay them respect, amen, because they brought you into this world and they definitely can take you out. <laughs> amen. 
Amen. Remember that. Never disrespect them. Amen. Even no doubt, but we, we live in a world where getting today, parents are being disrespected, uh, elders are being disrespected, but we pray that they'll come back today. Amen. So we talking about here today, again, we're going to get into it in a minute, again, the, te the text here, but again, uh, you thought about how do we honor them, and so honor them, again, when somebody talks about your mother, that's why it's something down on the inside of you, those are fighting words, isn't it? When somebody disrespects your mother, you was ready to, ready to go at it, wasn't you? What you say about my mama because something down on the inside was there to bring respect and honor to your mother. Does everybody follow? But back to where we want to go. In most cases, again, uh, uh, they're left with the duty. You ladies, you're left with the duty of the daily task. Think about this. Raising children is not easy. Again, it's a life. It's a precious soul. The responsibility of being a mother. Are you listening? Think about this. You are made, no doubt. You are there. And again, back to what I was saying, oftentimes the fathers are where at work or the father men in nowadays is not around. But we begin to see for us men today, let us be around for our children. Amen. But again, the importance of it all. Again, today it's been so important. The motherhood is so important to because you are starting them off on the right path. You start them out on the right path. They're the very diverse things that you uh, really, the interaction thereof. I even heard it brought this way because you shared nine months with them. You swapped bodily fluids with them. You, they heard your conversations. They, they felt your emotions inside your womb. How you listening to them? And so no doubt you had a key and it was so important to have a, a, a good atmosphere while you're pregnant. Why? Because again, it can many times would affect the pregnancy or, or the birth of that child. How many know what I'm talking about? And so we begin to see even from that stage all the way up to adulthood or even uh, teens and adulthood and early adolescent years, it is so important that we put them on the right path. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, train up a child in what? The way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so we endeavor, ladies today, men also, we endeavor to give them a better life. How many want that for your children? Amen. To give them a better life, your conditions, regardless of your conditions, you treat them to strive to do better. We're going to get to the message right now. Amen. In the book of Exodus, we read to you about uh, the mother of Moses. It was an account where the mother of Moses did what she had to do. Amen. She was willing to do whatever it took to see deliverance. How you listening? To see deliverance. Does anybody know her mother's name? His mother's name. It's not written here in this place, but again, today you found in Exodus chapter 6, her name is Jacobed. Amen. Jacobed. And so, Jacobed, you find it through the genealogies, it was written there. I don't know why the Bible didn't refer to it immediately, but God did refer to not, to, prefer not to do that. The Bible focuses on Mer uh, Moses uh, throughout the uh, book of Exodus, but his mother was the key and put an inner trait inside of him. Are you listening? The key, no doubt, was the inner trace that we find and we glean from this about his mother. Amen. The inner trace that she had. Moses was a strong leader and it took a strong mother to do what she did. Are you listening? Moses was a, uh, was a fearless leader. And no doubt for what Jacobed did, it was going to take some fearless effort to do that. Does everybody follow? Moses was a determined leader and his mother was determined that she would not see her son destroyed. Amen. Jacobed, her name means Yahweh is glory. Yahweh means in Hebrew, God. God to God be the glory. Her life, no doubt, uh, when, I guess would determine that she wanted to glorify God. Again, and, and the word Hebrew means to pass over to traverse. We're not going to go into it today. But again, whatever it takes to pass over this morning, amen. Whatever it takes to go through, you must see, be determined to see that child delivered, amen. In Exodus here, we find if the setting was, again, they were now enslaved. The children of, the children of Israel, the Hebrews, were now enslaved in, Ex in Egypt. It was a tough time to live in, a tough environment. They ended up in, in Egypt because of a famine. It was a difficult time. They were there. They migrated there because of the famine. And Egypt was the superpower of the time. And they had to, uh, uh, again, Egypt had all of the food. And they began to distinguish it out through uh, Joseph. We read about in Genesis, chapter, the latter parts of Genesis. The Bible says there was a famine. And, but then after a while, a new pharaoh came to power. The old pharaoh had died. And now there was a new pharaoh. And he, the Bible says, he was a cruel taskmaster. Can you imagine changing uh, uh, office? And one had a good, one good uh, uh, pharaoh. But the next man, he was he flipped the script on him. 
He was once favorable to them. The previous Pharaoh was favorable to them. But now this Pharaoh, the Bible says, was a cruel taskmaster. He despised them. And no doubt, as a result, he enslaved them. They were now slaves for many years. For many years. And the Bible says he looked out and saw that they were doing well. The Pharaoh saw that the children of Israel seemed better because of the God that they served. You do better when you serve God. Are you listening to this name? Amen. You do better serving God. You do better coming out. You come out better serving God. He saw them. He said, hey, we need to destroy all of these boys before, before, again, they, they outnumber us, if you please. And it's really prophetic going forward here. Again, these boys, again, he made a decree to destroy all the, the, the boys. Again, uh, uh, because we see they were going to be a threat to them. Men today, we see the, uh, the devil, same thing in our modern day society. The devil is afraid of our men. Amen. He's afraid of our youth. That's why he attacks our young men so strongly. That's why he attacks our youth so strongly. Amen. Because he wants not to see them to, to grow and develop into the men that they would have them to be. And so Pharaoh said, kill all of the boys. Can you imagine? It's going through the land to kill all the boys. And we see today our uh, boys... In our day to day, we liken unto how the devil tries to do it also. The boy, boys will grow into men, and no doubt the devil will do all he can because they are a threat to him. The, de the boys, the men, will become a threat, become a threat to the devil's kingdom. The men are made to protect. Men are made, no doubt, to work and provide. And, and again, a lot of our women today are being forced to raise boys. Men, as we said before, let's step this thing up, amen, and raise our boys up, amen. The Bible says to you today, because, and so men have become in a vicious cycle, not being, again, today, uh, but we de are determined today to break that vicious cycle. Does everybody follow today? Amen. When they would go to bed, again, today at night, let them find your father's there, amen. I'm, you say it's Mother's Day, this is Father's Day, amen. When you go to bed at night, will we be there? In the morning, will they see us getting up, going to work? Will, are we considered that provider for them? Amen. Again, today, to show them because that's something that they're not seeing nowadays. They send mama go to work. They send mama again provide. They send mama do the hard work. Are you listening? Come on, man. Let's step it up. Amen. The devil fears that they will grow into godly men. The devil feared, no doubt, that they will grow into godly men. They will grow into men that will fear God and serve God. Godly men and women, as we're going to look here in a minute, they, will tra they can transform a nation. Are you listening there? That quote, Brother Sanders Mizgo, was right down the line where we're going today. Godly men will transform a nation. And no doubt, Jack Jacobin realized this. Her son, no doubt, was of great importance. Every child is of great importance this morning. Are you listening? Raise that child of great importance. Amen. Raise them up and realize, amen, wait a minute. This is a man, or a future leader, or future man that can transform the nation. Are you listening? We need some people with the transformative attitudes. Today, church, you make, make that your prayer for your son and your daughter, your grandson and your granddaughter. Amen. God raised them up to be a transformative person. Amen. To see the whole thing because we read about Moses. He was going to transform a whole nation. Amen. He was going to transform a whole situation coming from slavery into the promised land. We find again in the day, again, this great feat that she did was going to make a huge difference. Amen. Today, godly men and women can transform. Godly boys and godly girls can grow up to transform a world and become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. How many want to see that today? Amen. To become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And we will find today that Moses was the same way. The devil endeavors to kill them off in abortion. It's the same way with the man, uh, the favor wanted to kill them that way. No doubt we find it happening today in our world. How many know that? The same story is all revolved. Nothing new under the sun. They killed them after birth. Amen. And they're trying to do that here in America now. They're trying to kill them after they have birth. They're trying to make it legal to where they can post-birth post -birth abortion. <laughs> or late-term abortion, I say. And we see that today. It's nothing new. Again, Pharaoh wanted to kill all the boys. Kill them through uh, the abortion or kill them through systematically or kill them again through poor living conditions or lack of education, all these different things today. But she was determined not to see that happen. She was willing to do whatever it took to see her son delivered. Are you listening to that? Amen. 
Is everybody follow that? Everybody are good with me this morning? Seeing, doing whatever it takes to see them deliver. Again, today, a strong mother uh, uh, does, needs a strong support system also. Amen. A strong mother needs a strong support system to come in. Again, the people, uh, again, we need some people that will have conviction like she did. She said, not my child. Are you listening? Jacob had said, not my child. I'm not going to let my child die. Are you listening this morning? Come on, ladies. Amen. I'm not going to allow my child, father, be the same way I'm I'm not going to allow my child to be caught up in the system. I'm not going to allow my child to be caught up by Pharaoh and his devices today. I'm not going to allow my child to be destroyed by the devil this morning. You make that your prayer, not my child this morning. Amen. Make that your prayer this morning. The devil hates you to have your family. He hates your family. He hates my family. He hates all of mankind because we're made in the image of God this morning. And our praise is that every child system, you can't have our children this morning. Amen. Devil, you can't have our children. Amen. This one does not belong to you. That's where her prayer was. This boy right here will not belong to the clutches of death this morning. Amen. Make that your prayer this morning. Amen. Parents, brothers, uncles, aunts, whoever you may be, friends and neighbors, let's make that our prayer. We have to fight for our youth this morning. Jacobit was going to fight for her son. She took a big risk. The Bible says that how did they begin to gather them all? They were hiding out. They were hiding out. Jacobit refused to accept the hand that she was dealt. Mothers today, fathers, whoever you may be, refuse to accept the hand that you've been dealt. The hand of death was dealt to her and her children. Are you listening? The hand was dealt and said, this is the decree. But she had a different mindset. She was willing to say, you know what? I'm going to take a risk. I'm not going to accept what my hand has been dealt. Get a day, people, we must fight through. She was willing to fight through a movement led by a concerned mother. As we mentioned earlier today, I believe there's a movement that can take place. Amen. Amen. There's a movement that can take place by some concerned parents this morning. Do I have some concerned grandparents this mother? Amen. This morning. Can I get some folks that are concerned? I believe a movement can take place. We talked about Sunday, Easter Sunday morning about a power shift. How many believe it today? To where the power can shift from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Where the power shift for men and women beginning to pray, to beginning to call on God and intercede for our families and our children. Amen. Again today, a power shift. The, it's almost like gravity pulling men and women down. But today, we can believe God to transform that thing and turn it around. Amen. Again, Jacob refused to allow the circumstances to take her child. Again today, whatever it takes to see deliverance is the title. In verse 2, uh, Exodus the Bible says uh, three months she carried it as long as she could. She had to sneak him around. She had to sneak him around and keep him. Can you imagine trying to keep that baby from crying? As the soldiers passed by, can you imagine she had to hide him? And today, again, it's a lot of work being a mother. But again, the month, I imagine all the things that she had to go through. Again, today, as we see the emotions that they, uh, she, the, the challenges that she faced. Mothers, you go through so much, and again, we say we take our hats off to you. Amen. You have to juggle many hats, and we pray this morning, God bless our mothers. Amen. Again, we, let's go down to verse 3. The Bible says, and when she could no longer hide him, she took him into the ark of the bulrushes, made him an ark of the bulrushes, and dabbed it with slime and pitch and put the child therein, and she laid the flag in the flag. So basically, she made a little basket. Y'all probably seen pictures before how she made a little basket, right? And she took mud and various things and coated it so it can float down the stream. Doing whatever it takes, she prepared the basket for her child to see her child survive and escape this thing. Amen. To see her child escape. The Bible says in verse 4, the Bible says God also had her sister come and help. Amen. As we mentioned before, thank God for family that will help. Amen. Family that would help. The sister was, her job was to go and watch the baby's back as she floated downstream, doing whatever it takes about your nephew. Amen. Doing whatever it takes about your loved ones. Say today, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Amen. Whatever it takes, uh, we need help. A support system, amen, for one another. Prayer support, amen. More support. How many know what I'm talking about today? Church support. Again, just to support one another in prayer, lifting one another up. We need each other, amen, to pray for one another, amen. 
Again, God's timing in verse 5. The Bible tells us in verse 5. The Bible says, and, and Pharaoh's daughter was there. It's amazing how God's timing. The daughter of Pharaoh was there. She came down at the right time to go wash there in the river. I, thought, I wrote down about how God, allowing God to position you. Reverend said something about it earlier. Allowing God to position you. Amen. To position you, being in a position for opportunity. And so no doubt his mother did whatever it took to put her son in the right position. Come on now. To put her child in the right position. And today we encourage you parents today, make sure you put your children in the right position. Amen. To put them and do whatever it takes. Thank God for caring parents that say, you know what, I'm going to try my best to put them in the best school. I'm going to try my best to put him in the best position so he can be the most successful opportunity that he can find. Amen. When you put your children in the right position today, there are opportunities that await. Amen. There are opportunities that await. Most time, people are out of position, however. Most of the time, people are out of position. This morning, we pray that you'll get in position, parents. Amen. Let's get in position today. Let's not be outside of God's will, but let's come to Christ this morning. Order our steps. The Bible says the steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord. Amen. So her steps were ordered. She will, and, and as you do that, God will see and ensure that things will fall into the order. Many times people are out of order, but things are out of order in life because they're out of order with God. Does everybody follow God, lead me. Lead me by your spirit. God will direct to amazing miracles that can take place. As you're led by the spirit, watch how God can work. Amen. Led by the spirit, watch how God will work. Amazing opportunities, amazing positions open up because, amen, you put, no doubt, your child or you put yourself in that position. And that position is in God. Amen. To put your, get positioned in God. To get in the right place where God, Reverend talked about, amen. To get in the right place where God wants you to be. To get in the right, did you see this message, brother? You peeked over it. Amen. To get in the right position, amen. To get in the right place today. Thank God today. That's the Holy Ghost, amen. To put you in the right spot to where God can bless you and put you in the right place. So the baby was positioned just right so she can, he can move right underneath the devil's nose. Amen. In verse 5 and 6, the right people, again, you will find the right people. Amen. To position to find the right people. The Bible says God will send people our way. And God, uh, uh, again, some has been fulfilled. We, made, we, we, we mentioned this at the beginning of the year. We believed in, believe in God and God will position us to where we meet people. Amen. Meet people that absolutely uh, are getting, can't open up doors that we can't even imagine. I believe that. We're only five months into the year, amen. It perhaps it's coming to pass already in your life, but I believe that again that God can do things in your life to position you, amen. The Bible goes on and says it today. Again, determined, determined mother to move and move. Uh, again, it's our move. We must follow God's plan. We must follow God's plan. In verse 6, the Bible says, and Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter saw the child. The Bible says that she saw the baby crying and she had compassion on him. And this, she said, this is one of the Hebrew boys, one of the Hebrew children. Again, I'm reminded of a scripture in the book of uh, Proverbs. It says, how he says, we shall find favor with God and man. Amen. How many want that? You will find favor with God and with man as you begin to put in the right position in the book of Exodus 7 and 8, the Bible says, and she, then, then the sister of Pharaoh's daughter, said, shall I go and call the nurse? In other words, she was in the right position, and she already had the plan sorted out. She says, I'm going to go, and I'm going to ask the Pharaoh's daughter. She says, can I uh, uh, speak, uh, can I go and, and find a nurse for the lady? Amen. I will go find a nurse for this baby. Again, I wrote down here in 7 and 8, let's speak up for our children. Amen. Amen. To speak up for our children. His sister spoke up for him. Are you listening? Amen. His sister spoke up for him. And we mentioned about that, about praying. To speak up in prayer for your children. Amen. To speak up. To call on a living God this morning. 
to call on a living God and says, God, again, uh, we pray for them and we learn to pray for them. And, and again, until we see breakthrough for that child, it may take several years to pray for them. It may take several months. They may let you down, but continue to pray for them. Amen. Go before the Lord in prayer. As we see how this, uh, even uh, Samuel, in the book of Samuel, Hannah, she did the same thing. She interceded for her child. Various ones called upon the living God. Why? They spoke up for that child. Amen. The Bible says they interceded, amen, until they were convinced. She spoke up. She spoke up and said, hey, can you uh, uh, nurse? Can I go find a nurse for the child among the Hebrew women? Again, she wanted to guide the narrative. You see how she guided the narrative? Amen. Does everybody follow? She guided the narrative. She guided the narrative in church this morning, mothers this morning, fathers this morning. We have to guide the narrative. Amen. Her mother got it. She said, I want you to go over there and stand over there and wait for the mother to be recognized and to be to put baby to be seen. And as a result, the narrative was guided. And in our lives this morning, we have to guide the narrative and say, nope, you're going to stay in school. Nope, you're going to uh, continue to uh, come to church. Amen. Nope, you're going to continue to do what God wants you to do. Amen. You begin to guide the narrative this morning. Amen. And say, you know what? I'm going to point them to Christ. I'm going to point them to the Lord. I'm going to point them to Jesus, no doubt. We have to guide the narrative. Amen. Again today, speak up for whatever. We're talking about this morning about doing whatever it takes to see deliverance. Whatever it takes to see deliverance. Speak your way through. Pray your way through until you see deliverance. Amen. Again, they found favor with Pharaoh's daughter. There, in verse 8, this is Exodus 2, 8. The Bible says, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. God will give you the desires of your heart. If you're willing to do whatever, God will give you the desires of your heart. If you're willing to do whatever she desired to see her son, make it. She desired to see her son alive. She desired to see that. And as a result, God allowed her son to survive Moses. Again, in the day, a lot of successful people, it takes persistence. How many want to be successful? See your children grow up to be successful, amen. What's going to take persistence? His mother was persistent and saying, uh-uh, he's not going to die. He's not going to get caught up in the system. It was a persistent parent today, amen. It was a persistent heart today. She was willing, amen, again in the day to see that come to pass. Jacobac wanted her son to live, and as a result, uh, she had a delivering heart. Uh, she had a heart of a deliverer deliverer this morning amen and I truly believe that's where Moses got his heart from from that because again in the day he was considered the deliverer of the children of Israel amen a deliverance this was the very first act of deliverance amen and we see in her, his life no doubt he went on to be a deliverer and as we said before how he went on to change and do great things for God this morning church today we have to begin to see that and pray that for our children today because there's so much great potential in the lives of men and women amen there's so much potential bottled up in these children. In the back here, amen, there's so much potential. So it's important to have this spirit of Jacobin. The Bible says she was a risk taker. She was a risk taker. And as a result, Moses also became a risk taker, amen. He was going to go stand before Pharaoh, amen, and say, I declare unto you, my God says, let my people go, amen. Can you imagine going before the world leader? Hey man, with a rod, only a stick in your hand. <laughs> Going before him and say, who is this fella? This long road. Hey man, who is this fella? He went in there, he went in before Pharaoh. The Bible says he had boldness. God give him boldness. It's important to dedicate your children to the Lord. Hey man, God will give him some extra, man. He has something extra from above. The Bible says he had bonus to be able to go in and accomplish great things. The Bible says he stood before Pharaoh and says, God says, let my people go. Amen. Amen. God said it today. He says, well, what is your name? And the Bible began to declare. He says, tell him I am sent you. Amen. We serve a great God who's able. Amen. We serve a mighty God who's able to do great things. Again today, any and everything, as you go with God and, and be filled with God, God is able to do great and mighty things. We see how he opened up the Red Sea, how it Great miracles were performed through him. He led a great amount of people. Why? Because, again, the God that he served today. We encourage it again to point them to God. Our children often would take the traits of our parents, as we said before. 
Again, the good we try to claim and the bad we try to dismiss, right, to the other parent. Whatever it takes to be a better man, a better woman than me, she was willing. She said, whatever it takes, God, let him be better. Whatever it takes this night, this morning, as you look over your life, whatever it takes this morning, let me get to Jesus this morning. Whatever it takes for you, parents, all of us this morning, if you're not a parent, it does not matter. Whatever it takes, get to God. Whatever it takes to get to the deliverer. Again, it starts with us, friends, those influences that we have. It starts with us to influence men and women and those children today in the right path. He says, train them up in the way they should go. If they're around cursing, they're going to grow up to curse. Come on. If they're around cursing, they're going to learn to curse. If they're around drugs and alcohol, before long, they won't be, they're won't be. they going to find themselves getting involved in it. Hey, Amen. And they don't see, again, uh, they don't see marriage as a good chance they won't get married themselves. Come on. A man gets up and goes to work, it's a good chance that child's not going to get up and go to work. Come on. Hey, Amen. If that child grows up not respecting women, it's a good chance he's going to grow up disrespecting women. Hey, Amen. Jacobin, as we finish up, Jacobin was able to raise her son right underneath the nose of Pharaoh, as you see in verses 8 and 9. Right underneath the nose of Pharaoh. This is amazing, this story, church. You got to go back and read it. Again, so this child who was destined for death was directed and raised up in the house of the very man that declared they was going to kill him. That's amazing. The very, the very man that wanted to kill all of these babies, Moses would grow up in his house underneath his nose. Amen. In the face, and, and in the face of the enemy, she declared deliverance. And today in this generation that we live in, in the face of a wicked generation that we live in, the same thing right underneath the devil's nose. I believe that this morning. Amen. God can raise up some children this morning. Amen. How many going to pray that prayer with his name? In the midst of a corrupt and perverse generation, mothers and fathers today, be determined right underneath the devil's nose, we're going to raise up a mighty uh, group of young men and women. Amen. Men and women, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to raise them up and point them to Christ. Why? Again, today, right underneath the devil's nose, because again, they all, we are all born in sin and iniquity. But thank God for Jesus Christ, no doubt, who's able to wash away sins today, amen. We don't have to stay born wrong, but we can be born again by the Spirit of Almighty God, amen. And right underneath the devil's nose, right underneath the wicked generation we live in, you can live for God, amen. Not everybody has to be a statistic this morning. I said not everybody has to be a statistic this morning. Again today, raising them up right underneath the devil's nose. God, will raise, I believe that today as we go forward. Be praying with us. I need some men and women that's going to pray with us. That God will raise up mighty young men and young women. Amen. God will raise them up to serve God and live for God. God that will go and do great things. Whatever it takes. Amen. Whatever the circumstance may be. It will not hinder them from rising to greatness. Are you listening this morning? Whatever the circumstance may be. Whatever the living conditions may be. As we see here today with Moses. It did not matter. He was able to rise up through it all. Amen. His mother was determined to see her son come and not be affected by the circumstances that she faced. Amen. To where they can transform the neighborhood. To where we see our youth grow up to transform neighborhoods and to go and accomplish remarkable things. Amen. As we finish, Moses' name, come on up sister, Moses' name meant to be drawn out of water. That's the definition of his name. To be drawn out of water. His mother, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, named him Moses. The meaning of his name was to be drawn out of water. Today, God is able to draw you out of water. Amen. If you feel like you're drowning, life, no doubt, is having you overwhelmed this morning. God is able to pull you up out of it. God is able to raise you up. God is able to prevent you from drowning in sin this morning. God is able, well, you may be drowning in problems this morning. But we serve a God that can deliver. Amen. His name meant he brought, he was kept brought out of the water. 
In whatever flood you may find yourself in, flooded with difficulties, flooded with circumstances, today God can do the same thing for you. can pick you up out of that mess. Amen. God can turn her life around. The flooded with sorrows, flooded with problems. Today, whatever the case, there's a lifesaver today. Amen. There's a life preserver today. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And today, God is throwing a lifeline out to you this morning. He said, hey, I can deliver and today he was willing to, uh, to think about Christ. He was willing to do whatever it took to see you delivered. He did whatever it took to see us delivered. How many thankful for that this morning? Amen. We just celebrated the resurrection Sunday. He came and gave his life because he was willing to see whatever it took to see men and women saved. Willing to come and give his life, no doubt, to see you delivered. Thank God for Jesus' name. And he's willing to do whatever it takes. In spite of what you may have done, in spite of the sin, no doubt, in spite of letdown today, God is willing to come and save you. It's almost like a uh, light out of the National Guard, I mean, uh, the Coast Guard and various ones. Some of the people go out there and when it's raining and when it's, the storm is blowing, when the, when the seas and the hurricanes and all these different things, the treacherous, treacherous waters out there. But they're willing to go out. They're willing to go out and reach out. And God is the same way in your life. He's willing to reach out to help you. And churches, we bow our heads in reference to God today. Are you willing to do whatever? Are you willing to do whatever? Are you willing to come to God? She was willing to do whatever it takes to see deliverance. She was willing to do whatever it takes to see. And no doubt her seed, her son, survive. And mothers today, make that your prayer. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to see my son survive. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, fathers, to see my family survive. There's been an attack on your family, an attack on your home, an attack on this generation. But we need some praying people to say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to see them survive. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to see them delivered. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. No doubt deliverance today has come. The deliverer has come. His name is Jesus this morning. His name is Jesus. Hey Amen. It's up to us to do something about it. She was willing to do it. In church today, let us be willing to do that same thing. To come and dedicate our lives to God. And as we bow our heads in reference to God this morning, if you're not saved today, you want to be saved this morning, you lift up your hand, we're going to pray with you. Say, I, I want to see deliverance. I want to see, I'm tired of drowning, I'm tired of swimming, I'm tired of getting into the surroundings that I have, but God is able to bring you out of that rough surrounding and bring deliverance to your life. Today, today, begin to call on God. Say, God, I want to be saved this morning. I'm on my way to hell. I'm destined for hell today, but God can deliver you from hell this morning. Today, if you don't know him today, we can pray with you and God can change your life. Today, whatever the circumstance may be, God can deliver this morning. God can make a way. Today, we serve a mighty God that's more than able to meet every need. Today, if you need power today, come on, God can give you power. God give you the boldness that you need to stand up against opposition. God can give you that what you need through the Holy Spirit to help you go and fight. You're looking for a breakthrough this morning. God can break through for you. No doubt the destiny that you had on, God can change that path for you this morning. He can change the path. Moses was destined for death as a baby. But the path of a determined mother was able to change. Perhaps you have some wayward children this morning. Pray for them. Pray for them. Take them before the Lord in prayer this morning. Perhaps you have some children in your family, your, host, your household today. Pray for them. Nieces and nephews, maybe you don't have children today. Whatever case may be, but pray and seek the Lord. In church today, as we stand to our feet this morning, go before the Lord in prayer. The altar of prayer is open this morning when we come before the Lord. Let's take it before God and say, God, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to pray whatever it pray, the prayer I need to pray. I'm willing to do whatever God for you. God, to see deliverance. I'm willing to do whatever, God, to break these chains, God, to break, no doubt, the circumstances I find myself under. Today, make that your prayer this morning. The altar prayer is open. If you need prayer this morning, we can pray with you. Seek the Lord today. We pray for our youth. We pray for this next generation. Lift them up in prayers with us this morning. And God, no doubt, and God will raise them up to go and do great things for God. We need some men and women that will be like Jacob Ben, who was willing to do whatever for the kingdom of God. Let's make that our prayer this morning. Let's all find a place to pray. Let's all seek the Lord this morning. Call upon the living God this day. Amen. Let him have his way.
Come on to the altar of prayer this morning. Come to the altar of prayer. Dedicate it unto the Lord. Bring that child to the Lord. Bring your family to the Lord. Bring your burdens to the Lord. Cast your cares on him. God can deliver this morning. God can deliver. He can deliver. He can meet every need in this house. Let the Lord have his way. Let the Lord have his way today. myself.